Howdy folks, Jambariki here. SpongeBob SquarePants has a reputation for being a funny, goofy, and wholesome cartoon about the adventures of a silly sponge. But it's also pretty dang weird too, and said strangeness can inspire some very dark ideas for episodes. So I ended up going for a long list of episodes that fans considered to be the darkest, and made my very own top 10 countdown. Let's begin. Rock Bottom When Spongebob misses his bus stop at Bikini Bottom, he ends up stuck on the ocean's floor and has to desperately find a way home. This town is a creepy place for Spongebob to be lost in, an internally dark abyss inhabited by the sea's scariest looking fish. <laughs> 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 Everything here is alien to Spongebob, and he struggles to speak the townspeople's language. When is the next bus to Bikini Bottom? What? The bus schedule, the next bus. I can't understand your accent. He can't just simply walk home because the road back is at a drop angle. So Sponge has to rely on a bus service that keeps messing him around. Almost like the drivers want to see him stuck here. I'll only be gone a second. <laughs> I feel like many of us have been in Spongebob's shoes before, lost in a town that we don't recognize, left to fend for ourselves. It's horrible, right? To make matters worse, the town then closes for the night, leaving Spongebob in even thicker darkness, without a working torch at hand. He really is at his most vulnerable now. Then, somehow, the episode makes the haunting echo of a raspberry sound threatening? Running! Better start running! 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 Sprinting! Yes! I just gotta keep sprinting! Sitting, sitting. Thankfully, this raspberry blower is actually a nice bloke who helps SpongeBob get home. However, it's hard to forget that SpongeBob was almost stuck here and may have never gotten home. Ah, uh, home at last. Don't worry, SpongeBob, I'm coming back for you! Planet of the Jellyfish When a jelly and alien lands in Bikini Bottom, it releases an army of offspring who each create jelly and clones of every local resident. I never thought I'd see a Spongebob episode based on the chiller classic, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, yet it exists. While the show plays the premise for giggles, there are still elements of sci-fi horror to the episode. I mean, there's something eerie about the fact that we learn very little about these aliens. They've appeared right out of nowhere and never explained their origins. It's a major principle of good horror. The less we know about the threat, the more menacing it is. I too have caught many jellyfish. Perhaps we should give one to each of our friends. <sighs> These clones might resemble our favorite characters, but they're obviously aliens crudely attempting to replicate their mannerisms. Every clone has soulless eyes, laughs unnaturally, and tries way too hard to push SpongeBob to join them. Hi, SpongeBob! Don't you want a cute little jellyfish? <sighs> no thanks. <laughs> You seem tired, Spongebob. Why don't you go home and take a nap? <sighs> it's also deeply unsettling how many residents they've successfully cloned. There's hardly any normies left in the town, and their pod collection is surprisingly big. Monsters! <gasps> Squidward and Mr. Krabs! <laughs> Patrick too! However, let's not give them too much credit, folks, because apparently mayonnaise is their weakness, and they've not exactly done a good job of disposing of said mayo. Planet of the Jellyfish sets out to parody an actual horror story, but in true dark SpongeBob episode fashion, it ends up being potential childhood trauma media. Uh, actually, I want one with extra mail. Crabby Patty Creature Feature When a pair of hipster customers ask for something new at the restaurant, Sandy reveals that she's cooked up the most scientifically perfect patty. But every customer who chows down on one of these patties transforms into a burger zombie. Now, the idea of burger zombies might seem silly, but everyone's mutations are quite disturbing to watch. And these customers look like they're in pain to be alive. They all have I want to die faces. Please kill me. Even the elderly and children become victims to this science nightmare. Here comes the choo-choo. No. <laughs> mm, that's not so bad. 
Most zombies are brain hungry and carnivorous, but these monsters want to be eaten because that's how they spread their plague. It's kind of weird how they want others to find them delicious and transform into what they are because they do not look happy being burger zombies. They've all become the very thing they've eaten every day. <laughs> If you wanted to really overthink it, you could read this episode as a commentary on processed food side effects and society's addiction to junk diets. But maybe I'm stretching things. The zombies tirade becomes so widespread that they create an apocalyptic bikini bottom full of chaos and destruction. Which, to be fair, wouldn't be a first for these townspeople. Welcome to the apocalypse, Mr. Squidward. Crappy patty creature feature could have been a simple goofy zombie movie spoof. But the artist ended up going ham on designs and the result is kind of messed up. <laughs> A pal for Gary. SpongeBob becomes very worried that his pet snail Gary feels lonely all day, so he impulsively buys a strange fluffy pet to be Gary's playmate. But this cute critter is really a terrifying monster who envies other pets. When Fluffy's bad side rears its ugly head, it's quite the shock, mainly because his jagged sharp teeth are kind of horrifying when bad. It's no wonder this beast scares the hell out of poor Gary. <laughs> Fluffy even evolves as the episode goes along, turning into this vicious thing that's so grotesquely designed that it doesn't look like it belongs in this show's universe. The whole episode centers on the joke that Gary's new pal is a monster, but it's never really funny. I can't laugh at a good boy like Gary cowering over something as scary as Fluffy. SpongeBob is a tad out of character too, because despite knowing Gary very well, he keeps mistaking Gary for the bad pet, which isn't as hilarious as the show thinks. When Gary is clearly suffering from SpongeBob's stupidity this episode, heck, SpongeBob even leaves Gary with a hungry Fluffy for a whole night, only to point the finger at Gary when he sees Fluffy's damage. Gary! Put Fluffy down right now! SpongeBob never ever apologizes for any misunderstanding, and Gary has to be the hero himself. So yeah, this is a really cruel episode of SpongeBob with a seriously unsettling villain of the week. Well, Gary, what do you have to say for yourself? Fungus Among Us. After Spongebob finds some strange green goo on his floor, not realizing that it's a sea disease called the Ick, it starts spreading all over him. This episode is pure Cronenbergian body horror. There's no two ways about it. The Ick itself is this horrible, itchy stuff that can rapidly grow and cause huge discomfort. Oh, uh, Spongebob? Yeah? I don't know about this. What makes you say that? Yes. <laughs> You are bound to feel really itchy just watching Spongebob scratch at it. The fact that Spongebob deludes himself into thinking that he's okay as he desperately hides the growing ick, all while said disease spreads like wildfire, is so disturbing. He's in total denial that he's now diseased. I won't let this minor setback hinder my fry cooking. Now nothing can distract me from frying up those patties. It's also highly alarming how easily this ick spreads too. Like, once it lands on Squidward, he ends up passing it around like it's nothing, and only realizes that he's caught the ick when it's too late. Ooh, why am I so itchy? No. Ah! SpongeBob gave me the ick, and I gave it to all you people! Oh, and it's kind of creepy seeing poor SpongeBob being kept in a bubble as everyone sees him as this threat of contamination. The way he's being treated is kind of dystopian. Where's my snail, Gary? We've taken care of your pet. Gary? Whoa! The it consumes SpongeBob so much that he ends up no longer looking like his adorable self. He becomes this walking fungus infected thing who is clearly suffering under all the green mush. Thankfully, Gary saves the day by reminding everyone that he's a natural bottom feeder and the ick is just tasty dinner to him. In spite of this happy ending though, let's not pretend that the ick can never return to Bikini Bottom. One Course Meal After Plankton reveals that he's genuinely terrified of Mr. Krabs' whale daughter Pearl, Krabs starts dressing up as Pearl to traumatize his rival for his own entertainment. This episode has often been criticized for being way too mean-spirited. Sure, Plankton is supposed to be the villain of this show, but Krabs isn't even trying to defend the secret patty recipe from Plankton when tormenting him 
throughout this episode, so he's just torturing Plankton completely for fun. I'm hungry! No! Krabs' demented version of Pearl is admittedly quite unsettling too. It's like a warped caricature of her, so no wonder Plankton is severely traumatised by her prowling. I want Plankton meat! Holy protozoa! It's supposed to be hilarious seeing Plankton lose his mind from Krabs' prank, but if anything, I actually felt sorry for the green guy and resented Krabs for being unnecessarily cruel. Plankton is so messed up by this whole ordeal that he starts having nightmares about Pearl hunting him down, and dream sequence Pearl is even more nightmarishly twisted. Things get even darker when Plankton officially gives up and announces that he's going to let a boat drive over him. Krabs has drained Plankton so much that he's decided to commit suicide, which Krabs actually celebrates. Really? He's a mess! Sure, SpongeBob eventually tells Plankton the truth, but even when Plankton is given the opportunity to get his own back, he's met with another whale attack prank. Because a hungry pot of whales just showed up for its early feeding. <laughs> Not another feeding. Jeez, I can now see why folks consider this to be one of the worst ever SpongeBob episodes. Plankton, your dinner's ready. Plankton, Plankton, do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you bring it up? I can't risk stepping into the light. Demolition Doofus. During a driving test, SpongeBob accidentally blows up Mrs. Puff's inflation sack and she ends up in hospital. In revenge, Mrs. Puff convinces SpongeBob to enter the demolition derby for extra credit. Right from the start, this episode is dark. I mean, Mrs. Puff looks so, so sad after being deflated. It's like she's being drained away. As sympathetic as she looks though, her rage towards SpongeBob is downright murderous. Ah! Mrs. Puff, what are you doing? This is all your fault. Which brings me on to the main reason why this episode made the list. You see, Puff only encouraged Spongebob to join the Derby in hopes of getting him killed. Yep, Sponge's driving instructor has gone full Norman Bates this episode. Risking their lives for our amusement? I could finally be rid of Spongebob. Forever! The other drivers at the Derby make for very intimidating competition for Spongebob, with one driver being lightly based on an iconic Twister Metal character for good measure. We get a strong feeling that these guys are going to destroy little Spongebob. Maybe we should give up now. <laughs> at first, Mrs. Puff tries to be discreet about her intentions, but once the drivers fail to end Sponge's life, Mrs. Puff abandons any niceties, and becomes 100% committed to seeing Spongebob getting squished. Uh, Mrs. Pop, what should I- Why are you still alive? Put it in drive! She's pushed so far that she ends up resorting to entering the derby herself to actively kill Spongebob at her own wheel. The gloves are off now, and she could be tried for first degree if successful. <laughs> Yeah, this is one gruesome Spongebob episode, and it's hard to let Mrs. Puff's deranged behaviour slide, even if Spongebob does survive by the end. Mrs. Puff, it's you! And you're all puffy again! Dying for Pie. When Mr. Krabs insists that Squidward get Spongebob a gift in the name of Employment Brotherhood, Squiddy impulsively buys a pie from some pirates, which turns out to be a bomb. So Squidward is now convinced that Spongebob doesn't have long to live. This story really reminded me of a Dark Simpsons episode in which Homer thinks that he's going to die, so he tries to live his whole life in a day. The difference here is that Spongebob has no idea that he's supposedly going to explode once the sun sets. <laughs> Heads up, Squidward. Looks like they're gonna replace you. There's this somberness to the episode that's brought on by Squidward's feelings of despair. He's both guilty for being behind SpongeBob's meeting with the Reaper, and grieving a friend that he thinks he's going to lose very soon. We better start now if we want to get through this list before you die. Of anticipation. While it is a rare time in which Squidward and Spongebob are getting along, it's all out of pity. So there's this melancholy to Spongebob's usual let's annoy Squidward antics that hits weirdly different. Hauntingly, Spongebob decides that his last activity with Squidward will be watching the sun set. While Spongebob calmly reflects on the day ending, Squidward is left to say goodbye to his workmate and neighbour. Here it is, the sunset! I always love to count it down! Five! You do the rest, buddy! 
four, three, two, one. When SpongeBob does explode, it's from behind a wall that Squidward built between them. So our imagination pictures something far more grisly. Of course, Spongebob hasn't really died. It turns out that they never even ate the pie. Which sure, is a very funny punchline. But Dan to this episode cruelly play with the audience's feelings. <laughs> well, at least I was able to make his last few hours meaningful. Are you happy now? When Squidward confesses that he's never had a happy memory before, Spongebob promises to help him make one, but every attempt leads to misfortune for Squiddy. This is an infamously bad Spongebob episode that leans way more to being sad than funny. Wake me when I'm dead. Every gag is just Squidward coming close to happiness and then suddenly having his joy ripped away from him. It's all really nasty. And now, he's melted it. Squidward gets so sick of his failed tries at finding a happy memory that he just surrenders to his sadness, and we get a series of very tasteless suicide attempt jokes. I can't seem to get happy. Maybe this will help. At first, Spongebob seems to be helping Squidward in good faith, but once Squiddy goes into a depression, Spongebob continues to obsess over giving his neighbour a happy moment. Instead of consoling Squiddy during a dark time and validating his feelings, Spongebob goes to extreme measures to force his friend to be happy. By hosting a party for Squidward, where all the guests are paper mache Spongebobs, only for Squidward to realise that destroying effigies of his annoying co-worker is the first time he's felt any real happiness. Which is concerning, disturbing, and kind of pitiful. I feel wonderful! <laughs> Squidward has always been a jaded and cynical character, but this episode takes us into the dark abyss of his woes and torment, making for a poor taste Spongebob episode that leaves behind a very sour flavour. Time to face facts. I'll never have a happiest memory. Before I reveal my number one pick, please know that I've made many, many other videos on darkest cartoon episodes on my channel, so please go check them out when you can. Thank you. Nasty Patty. When Spongebob and Mr. Krabs mistake their health inspector for a scam artist, they try to trick him into eating a rancid patty. Before the inspector can take a bite though, he accidentally swallows a fly and slips himself into unconsciousness. Sponge and Krabs think that they've just killed a man, so they try to dispose of the body. It's kind of wild that this episode even exists. It's a kid's cartoon about our heroes thinking that they're murderers and doing whatever they can to hide the physical evidence. We're all in agreement that that's weird, right? Gross. James, it's all aching and corpsey. <laughs> sure, the reality is that the health inspector has just conked out, but Sponge and Krabs don't know that, and we get to see how they really would react if they accidentally killed someone. This is their natural response. The episode is very tense and suspenseful, mainly because neither character has disposed of a body before. Their clumsy criminal work is made even more nail-biting once they bump into the police. All set! You okay there, little fella? Oh, he gets carsick real easy. And then the episode painfully drags out the threat of being caught on. The dark deed you requested is done, sir. I'll get it myself. Ice is in the freezer, right? There is no ice! There's never been any ice! Ice is just a myth! Step aside. Don't worry, folks. The inspector wakes up and even passes the Krusty Krab. Plus, the whole situation made for very, very funny black comedy. But we still just watched a pair of children's animated characters attempt to get away with murder. Every episode here on out will be played with that fact, and we'll never shake it off as fans. Can I lose my cool now? Why? So that was my countdown. Which Spongebob episode do you think is the darkest? Let everyone know in the comments. I've been Jamboriki. Cheerio, folks.